Hey everyone, this is Kyle here at Ace in the Desert. Welcome to part two of my Learn Bridge tutorial. So if you remember last time, we covered kind of the basics of the mechanics of the game and a little bit into card play and strategy. So we talked about the four different suits. We talked about the rank of which suits land tricks. So, um, or not the rank, but like the cardinal order in which Cards are high versus low, so aces are high, twos are low, and we talked about a number of other things. We talked about kind of the order of how play works, so one person leads, everyone follows, the person that wins that set of four cards played is called a trick, that person leads to the next trick. We talked about following suits, you have to follow suit to the card led if you can. And we saw some few examples of strategy. Like, first we, first we started with, like, well, let's just take our high cards, like aces. And then we talked about, well, we can maybe take connecting cards, like kings touching aces. Then we talked a little bit about setting up full suits of cards um, and a little, like, deeper strategy into, into reasons why we might not take aces straight away and how we can start to view tricks. So the first lesson was focused primarily on card play, but there's actually two parts to bridge. There's the play, which is what we talked about. It's when everyone, it's when you're actually playing cards, but there's also the bidding. And bidding is a bit unusual, maybe the first time you play it. Um, it's also called the auction. Bridge, bridge is, in the current form, is usually referred to as contract bridge or auction bridge. Um, so like you expect, you're having an auction. So you're competing for something, and you want to buy something. What you buy is what eventually is going to be the stakes of the hand. Um, so what you're going to buy is known as the contract. The contract determines what trump is and how many tricks you're going to take. So Or you're going to try to take. And so we'll kind of just get into an example of it. So bidding... One way to think about it is, so I'm the first person to bid here. The first two people in front of me have passed, which means they don't want to say anything to get in the auction. One thing I might bid is I might start bidding with one spade, which I'm showing, which I'm showing a preference for maybe spades to be trump. I'm also showing I probably have a pretty good hand. Like, look, I have a lot of aces and kings. I have... In terms of the deck, I have one of the four aces, three of the four kings. That looks like a pretty good hand. So I'm going to put a bid out there for spades. And in this case, I bought spades. Um, and looking at how I bought spades, now we're on the play of the hand. And we can look at the final contract we bought was one spade. Um, the contract is bought when someone bids, followed by three passes. So I bought a spade. And buying one spade means two things. One, spades is trump. And also determines, that's the first thing. The second thing it determines is kind of stakes of scoring. So we're at the one level. So we'll get a positive score if we achieve the one level or higher. So achieving the one level, the one level is starting to say you'll take at least half of the tricks. So seven of the 13. Um, it wouldn't make sense really to claim less than half the trick. So we start the bidding at saying, I can take at least half, and we go all the way up to the 7 level, which is which is 6 levels higher than half, so half is 7, 6 levels higher is all 13, because there's 13 cards, there's 13 tricks per hand. Um, so if we take at least 7 tricks, we'll get a positive score, and we'll get a higher positive score the more tricks we take. Um, and we can talk about reason. we haven't really talked about reasons to bid higher than the 1 level, We'll get to that a little bit more later. Essentially, reason the basic reasons are um, because you're in competition, right? The opponents, maybe the opponents here, like they have really long, they have eight clubs. So maybe they want to go for two clubs and not let us buy one spade. And so they're going to push us up. And then there's also scoring bonuses, like claiming you're going to take all 13 tricks is a pretty big deal, right? Because um, that's hard to do. You're saying if I don't take all 13 tricks, we're going to, you're risking a minus score because if you take less than 13, getting a minus score so there's this risk reward you're going to get a huge bonus for taking all 13 and there's also 
two lower levels than taking all 13. Taking all 13 is known as a grand slam. We also have a small slam, which is taking 12 of the 13, so a little bit easier. And then we also have the game bonus, which varies a bit, and we'll talk more about game later. Um, but when you're not in game, you're in part score, which is what we call it. When you're in game or lower, it's called part score. So part score means there's no bonus, so we're in a part score contract now. And there's game, slam, and grand slam bonuses if you bid up that high. And we'll talk about it when we get to one of those contracts. So we're going to play. So maybe we play low from both hands because we can't win the king. Um, so the king's swallowing the ace. They're playing a heart. And we won that trick, which you might be a little surprised, right? Because the ace is out. So someone chose not to win the race. Maybe there's a reason for that. I'm not entirely sure. So we talked about yesterday, or I guess it was two, it was two days ago when I recorded it, but we talked about last time is the words I should be using because I don't know when people are watching this. We talked about pulling trump if you don't have a reason not to. So here spades are trump, and we don't want them rough. We have long suits like hearts and diamonds, and once they run out, we don't want them trumping our good cards once they come high like we have the queen and the jack we want to win hearts so we don't want them to start roughing them so one thing we can do is pull trump so maybe we play the ace and one thing i'm going to start doing is this is part of the strategy that you can get into later we can start counting the number of cards played so there's always going to be 13 so we had five we started with five partner had one that means we, there's 13 in the deck, so that means we're missing 7. So 2 of the 7 have just shown up, the 3 and the 5, which means there's 5 more. So we're going to just pay attention. There's 5 more trump we want to get rid of. Now there's 3 more trump, because they followed. And now there's just 1 more trump, because they followed again. So we're going to win this. Maybe we'll win with the king. We're going to win in the, the south hand because we want to pull trump. So we're going to play the 10. And we're going to say goodbye to the 9. That means that they have no more trump. And we're going to try... We want to set up winners. We have the ace. And we have the jack of hearts with the queen. So maybe part of the strategy, we might want to try winning them. So maybe they'll duck... So the ace is still out, if you remember from before. We'll play the queen, maybe they'll win the race, maybe they'll not, but regardless, next time the jack will be high um, if they take the race. So it's not a big deal either way. So now the jack is high, which is wonderful. And look, we're even promoting the nine, because the nine is between the jack and the ten. So the nine is good. We win the ace. You may not remember if the diamond's high, but... You know, that's okay. We don't have much choice at this point. We're going to play Diamond to the Jack. Maybe it'll win. Maybe it won't. You don't, have to, you don't have to remember everything when you're first starting, but you're going to at least make a good attempt to. And the 10 is good, but we're actually going to win with the Trump because it's the only card left. So we took nine tricks, which means we made our contract of one spade. Our goal was to make only seven, so we made two more. And an interesting thing here is we're playing Duplicate Bridge. So duplicate bridge means um, that the same hand is played at other tables, and that's really what's going to determine the score. So our hand was played here, and some we're comparing it to some other random users that played on the site. So far, only one person has played, this user, KGALO. And they were in one spade, and they only made one spade for a score of 80. You don't need to worry how base scores are calculated, but what we're really concerned is this Wii versus is this number, the smaller number, and that's actually our score. So we got two more points over, or what are known as imps in this form of scoring. We got two more imps over our opponent for making two more tricks than them. Um, it's not always an extra trick, an extra point. Um, IMP stands for International Match Points, and it's kind of a logarithmic scale to compare a variety of scores. Um, scoring will be its own lesson, but no, we won two points for making a higher part score than our opponent. So good job.
Um, so that's one hand. Um, as a second part of this video, I'm just going to maybe bid through one more hand just so you can get an idea. Um, maybe we won't play through the whole hand. We'll see. Um, so East passed. Um, we can make a Vi for a suit here. Maybe the instinct is to bid one heart or something, but we actually have a kind of pretty weak hand, right? We only have two face cards. Face cards are the highest cards in the deck and the cards most likely to take tricks. So maybe we pass. Um, West has bid a spade. Um, their partner has bid some bid that is showing... We may not know what this means yet. They're bidding actually what's called a convention. So sometimes... So we so we thinking like bidding a spade means I have spades. Um, there's reasons as you get better to have assign other meanings to certain bids that are that are more efficient and make um, searching for those higher scoring contracts easier. So let's just see what the opponents do. Uh, and they bid the four spades. Okay, so here is something interesting. We're witnessing our first defense as a new player. So let's see what happens. So this is the first time in this series of videos where we're not playing the contract, right? West is what's so the person the person that wins the bidding is known as declarer. So West was the first person to bid spades and they won the final contract which is in spades, so West is declarer in spades. Um partner of declarer is known as the dummy. Their hand is put face up on the table and the declarer controls their hand, so West is playing for both West and East, and everyone can see East's cards. Um, we obviously see our own cards, so that leaves me and my partner, North and South, on this hand as the defenders. So as defenders, we're going to try to take as many tricks as possible and stop them from making their contract, if we can. Sometimes you can't, and that's okay. Depends on the actual layout of the cards. Sometimes it's just not possible to defeat a contract or take lots of tricks. Um, but the benefit, but we're going to try our best anyway. It's kind of the point of the game. And we hope in the long run we're going to do a lot better than our opponents. So we're defending in spades. Our partner has led. Fun fact, um, person to the left of dummy, or person to the left of declarer is the one that picks the opening lead. So the opponents always get the courtesy of starting the first trick, and the person left of declarer starts. So they lead. They lead before we see the east hand. So they lead, then the east hand, then the dummy hand becomes visible, and then we start. So partner led the seven. We can't beat this trick, so maybe we play low. They lead a spade. We'll play our only spade. They win the ace. They play a spade. We don't have any spades. We have to pitch something. Let's pitch something inconsequential, like a low heart. They play a club. We could try to win this with the queen, maybe. But the ace king are out. Um, partner won the ace. Um, looks like the ten of clubs is gonna, the jack of clubs is gonna be the new highest club because the ace king queen have been played. Jack of clubs wins a trick. They play a spade. We pitch something inconsequential. So we don't have any spades. Maybe we continue pitching diamonds because we've had a lot of low diamonds and we're committing to losing diamonds with high-ish diamonds on the board. Um, we don't have clubs, so we don't care. Maybe we're a little more cautious this time in hearts because we know the ace-king are out, so we don't put up our queen. Maybe there's benefit to that. I don't really know yet. Um, and we're just going to keep following suit as long as we can. And it looks like they're making their contract with some over tricks. So the opponents have taken 12 of the 13 tricks. And have made their contract for a score of 480. Maybe we'll see how we did versus others that played that hand. Um, so it looks like the hand hasn't been played by others yet. So we have a base score for the contract. You'll notice like the last hand, the scores were like 80 and 110, and now they're 480. That's because four spades is actually a game contract, so they got a game bonus for bidding four spades. Um, they made 
12 tricks, so you might be thinking, did they get the slam bonus, the bonus for taking 12 tricks? Um, they would have to bid a contract of six spades to get that bonus. So they got the smaller bonus of game, but they didn't get the larger bonus. And then we don't know how we did versus others yet, because um, it hasn't been played by other people. Um, so that's kind of my summary of the next stage of Bridge. We introduced a little bit about bidding, and we got to see what it's like to be a defender. Um, I hope this video was useful. If you enjoyed the video, um, subscribe below. I'm trying to point. Pointing is hard. Um, I'm new to YouTube. Fun stuff. Um, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. There'll be more. Um, I hope to finish a whole series kind of establishing the basic roles of Bridge. Um, then I hope to maybe have a more finalized like version, because I know this is pretty freeform, but I'm trying to make it like, you know, having a discussion and what you would say if you were just teaching someone versus having a whole lesson note. Because I know a lot of people learn bridge through like rigorous lessons and bridge isn't really like that at all. It's a free solving puzzle game. I don't think it should be a game of firm rules and I wanted to kind of author offer a way to learn bridge that isn't regimented and you know you can pick up parts as you go along. So I hope you found this video interesting, um, and thanks for watching. Um, stay safe out there, and see you next time for more Bridge.